Hey guys, I've got a nice game to share with you with a lovely finish. So at the moment, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to play one game each morning and just make sure that I win that game in order to keep my rating climbing slowly. It's much better to play one game and win it than to play three games and win one, lose two, for example. So um, my opponent here is rated just over 1400 and um, I start with e4, I've got the white pieces, and he plays the pits defense with d6. So the idea with the pits is that uh, black wants to bring out his knight, then his pawn, then his bishop, and then castle his king on that side of the board. So um, this is very similar to the king's Indian, where you normally where you don't start necessarily with that um, with that pawn push. But the point of the pawn push is that if you're going to put your knight here on f6, then that uh, discourages the e5 push hitting the knight because your pawn can then take the, uh, the pawn on e5. So I progress with d4, so I'm occupying the center, covering these, these key squares here and black then continues with knight to f6. I bring out my bishop to e, uh, so to d3, protecting the e4 pawn, and we have g6, so clearly we're looking for this bishop fianchetto and the king is gonna be castling kingside. So I now bring out my bishop. So one of the ideas is that when your opponent brings their bishop to this fianchetto square, as a key defender of the uh, of the king, and we'll see the importance of that bishop later on. One of the things that, that you can do is to put your queen behind your own bishop of the same color, and then drop your bishop in here and try to swap off the bishops, which you can force. If your opponent has already castled and the rook is then on this dark square here, then putting your bishop here will mean that you can force the exchange if you wish and what that means is that the dark squares around your opponent's king are then weakened and the same kind of thing goes where where it's white and black are switched over so bishop comes out and now i develop knight to uh, c3 i might be intending to castle now queen side and use my king side pawns maybe to push up and break into black's uh, position and knight to d7, and now I put my queen on d2. This does two things. It's reinforcing this uh, bishop trade if I wish to do it, and it's also allowing me to castle queenside. Black now plays a move which I thought was a little dubious, pushing h6 to kick my bishop away. Um, clearly, if black still intends to castle this way, then this pawn push could also be slightly weakening and we'll see how that pans out. So I just simply retreat my bishop now to e3 and the knight comes in to attack my bishop. This pawn is defended by the queen and the bishop and the king. So that is not the target. Uh, clearly he wants to eradicate my dark square bishop. So I figure that if he's going to castle kingside, <clears throat> actually losing this bishop here, and if I recapture with the pawn, it starts to open things up on the king side so that I can launch an attack. I might get a rook up there. I might do a rook lift, for example. And uh, black does proceed to remove my bishop. And now I ca uh, recapture with the f pawn. <clears throat> now, one issue here is that it does kind of block in my queen a little bit at this point in time. Black now does go ahead and castle on the king side. Uh, and I'm quite happy about this. I'm quite comfortable in this situation. Now in this game, the, uh, the machine thinks that I go about two points down in um, score at, at, uh, during the middle part of this game, but I'm not concerned. I mean, the, the engine rating is not the, the thing that you should be the most um, concerned about as you're an improving player. We're not here to play with perfect accuracy. We're not here to follow all the theory because simply who's got time to remember all of that. So I'm going to take the, uh, the engine's rating with a pinch of salt. And now I start an advance up the king side. So my idea here is to push up the pawns, uh, mess up the defense here, and then come in with rooks and queen and let's see how it goes. 
So we have now the other knight comes across to f6, replacing the knight that he's exchanged for my bishop. And I move my knight now to e2. So my queen is now pretty much blocked in. But I figure that um, my knight could have ideas of now coming in. I, I did think about, consider whether this square might be the best place to move my knight to. Um, and you have to think, so I've really got a choice of these two squares. So I can either move my knight straight to f3, or I could go e2 and then f4. And I figure that f4 might be a better place for my knight. And now we have e5, and I move my other rook across. So we've now got two rooks pointing up towards black's king. And the bishop comes out to attack my knight. I'm not concerned about that, but I move my knight in anyway, potentially supporting h5. Now, black does have one, two, and three pieces guarding that square, but this isn't about material. This is about launching an attack and winning the game, because that's all I want to do. Now we have c6, and I do advance my pawn. Now, this pawn is actually overwhelmed here, right? But black's first um, capture is likely to be with the pawn. If knight takes, I can take with the knight. And, and so on. I could even think about sacrificing my, my rook for a lower value piece uh, if I need to, but my goal here is to open up that position. So we have bishop takes and then knight takes and then knight takes. Now here I could capture with the rook, but I think I found a better move, which is g4. So now that this pawn has come forwards, the knight can't come to this square because rook captures. It also can't come to this square because pawn captures. So the knight is now forced to retreat to f6, and I push g5. Now we have pawn captures, which is not great for black. So clearly now, now that this pawn has moved and my uh, knight's moved out of the way, I've got ideas of bringing my queen across like to h2. However, I can't send my queen straight into there because of the knight is guarding it, and I can't put my queen on h8 because the bishop is guarding it. So we need to work up to the attack. So I bring my queen across to h2 anyway, and now we have rook to e8. Now one of the good things about this move, apart from the fact that it's centralizing the rook, potentially supporting any activity in the center of the board, but the other thing is that if my queen should ever get to drop into h, uh, well, not h8, because the king wouldn't have anywhere to go, but if my queen came into um, h7, um, so say I get rid of this knight somehow, um, h7 with the rook still there would have been checkmate, but this is also giving the king now a potential route to escape. So I move my rook across now to f1, with maybe with ideas of simply removing this knight and then dropping my queen in here. And now we have knight to h5. So I move my bishop back now. Clearly I'm not going to sacrifice my queen for a knight, but I've got a spare bishop, so let's use it. Let's bring all my pieces into the attack. So the bishop now is attacking the knight there. And now the king moves to one side. I capture, pawn recaptures, and I recapture with the queen. So notice now my opponent is still one, point, one pawn up in material. We have now f6, so reinforcing these two pawns, this one's now uh, protected twice, and this one's now protected twice. So currently there's no real route in. I can't simply drop my queen into h8 because the bishop is still there. And you, you can see now the importance of this bishop in that kind of King's Indian or Pitt setup. So now what I figure is, let's continue to use all of my pieces, right? So my knight's doing really nothing here on c3. But I see a route in for my knight. Right, can you spot a very nice outpost for a knight? Um, if knights are going to attack, they have to be in your opponent's side of the board. So I figure knight can come around here, and then maybe to g3, and then on to f5, hitting this bishop. And this bishop's actually got nowhere to go. Right? The king's blocking, and the pawn's blocking there, and the bishop can't go there or there, because my queen will simply capture. So now there's some counterplay from black. Black now has a, a prod 
at this pawn on a2. That's not a problem. I just move my king across and um, defend the pawn. So now when you look at the board, um, you'll see that black's rooks are really not playing any part in the game. They're not attacking my position. And the queen on her own is, is never going to do much damage there. Um, unless I move both my rooks out of the way and then there's like a back rank attack, but that's not likely. Okay, but what I'm doing here is I'm trying to employ all of my pieces in attacking black's position. We have a pawn push in the middle. I'm not concerned about that. I don't care about these middle pawns. I'm in for the kill. We have pawn takes and now the knight does come to that lovely f5 square. And this is an outpost square because the adjacent pawns on the adjacent files are already too far advanced to um, kick my knight away. They'd have to come to these squares and they can't go to those squares. They've already moved too far forward and the pawns obviously cannot move backwards. So now the bishop is really under attack. <clears throat> so what we have is queen back to c7. This is pretty much forced. So now if knight takes bishop, we have queen takes and black lives to fight another day. So what I do now is I move my knight to h6. And this cuts off a couple of uh, key squares for the king. If the bishop wants to capture now, I recapture with the queen. Black's in check, um, would probably have to block with the queen. Uh, but what we have is another pawn capture in the middle. And now I spot the finish. <clears throat> so, can you see the way in which um, white can basically force a win from this position? Okay, I'll give you a couple of seconds. And it starts with a very, very typical tactic and one that you absolutely need to know. Um, if we do the, uh, the uh, butterfly, not the butterfly, the goldfish <laughs> uh, here, you can see that uh, the rooks are defending each other, the queen is defending these two pawns, this rook is defending this pawn, bishop's defending that pawn, pawn's defending pawn, king's defending bishop, this pawn is currently undefended and under attack from that pawn. Now, I could simply capture that pawn and win a pawn, but then I've got maybe issues with this, this e-pawn starting to gallop up the board and cause me problems. But there is actually another pawn on this board that it, it, of blacks that is undefended, okay? And it's this guy, g5. Right, And the reason it's undefended, I mean, it's technically it's defended by a pawn, but this pawn here is pinned. This pawn cannot move off the f-file because of the, uh, the fact that my rook is looking at the king. So the pawn cannot recapture on there. So I, recap I capture now with the queen. And now we are very much threatening. So we have um, the pawn advance but it's too late. So now I come in and I sacrifice my rook and this is devastating now for black. So black is in check. Um, what can black do? The king can't go there or there because of the knight. The king could maybe escape to here, but then we've got queen takes bishop and on the next turn, I'm likely to capture the queen or even if the uh, so let's see, I mean, if, if king goes there, queen goes there with check, and then the king is going to have to move to one of these squares to protect the queen, which is currently undefended as well, and it's not likely to end well. And the reason is because I've got all of these pieces now swarming around black's position. So we could have, for example, you know, king to here, queen to there. Um, I can also now move my knight into f5 with check as well. And this rook here is also ready to jump in and join the action. So bishop takes rook is pretty much forced. And now queen takes bishop and that is the end of the game. The king is in check. Can't go to either of these, any of these squares because of the queen. And can't go to this square because it's covered by the knight. So the only legal move now for black 
would be queen to f7 and then we would have queen captures and that would be checkmate. So here you can see the critical um, advantage that you can get and the importance of using all of your pieces to attack your enemy's position. Even though you're down in material, I'm, here I am down an exchange and a pawn, right? But it doesn't matter because this rook here is playing no part in the game. This rook has not moved and is doing absolutely nothing. So that's five points of material. That's, a, that's a, a piece worth five points that black is not employing. Um, also, this rook is playing no part in the defense and it's all then down to the queen, but it's it's not simply not enough. And even these advanced pawns here aren't enough of a, a threat because black is about to lose the game. So I thought I'd share that uh, that nice attack and nice finish and i think particularly it starts with the realization that this is a an undefended pawn it's technically undefended because its defender is pinned and that is a pattern that you really really need to look out for okay so if you were going to goldfish now you could do all the, the normal you know markings to see what's defending what and the, the other thing that you can then do is say, okay, well, are there any pinned pieces on the board? And yes, this pawn here is pinned. It's defended only once. Okay, it's not this pawn that's pinned. This pawn is pinned, right? It's defended by the bishop, right? But it cannot move. It cannot move off this file, which me means that this defensive relationship, right, is actually not valid okay so this pawn is actually technically undefended and that then allows takes doesn't matter what black does because we have the rook sacrifice um, the king only has one square to go to but it's going to be curtains if the king moves there of course I've got even got rook to here uh, the king would then have to move and then the rook would win the queen so that is simply not viable so that has to be captured and then this is the end of the game. Okay, so there you go. Something to bear in mind as you go forward. Look out for pieces whose defenders are pinned. And crucially, use all of your pieces to attack your opponent. Okay, thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't yet subscribed. I'll see you soon.